Hello everyone, my name is Rachel and welcome back to another true crime video. So the case that I have for you all today is another very recent ongoing case. In fact, it happened only a week or so ago by the time I'm recording this video. However, I wanted to cover this case as soon as I could because one, it hits near and dear to my heart because of where it happened in Arizona and how it all went down. And two, so we can spread awareness about this type of situation as the summer months are coming and people are going to be spending more time outside. So this case involves 29-year-old Lauren Heike, who was described as being beautiful on the inside and out. Her mother described that she had a kind heart. From the time that she was a child, she was just so sweet and a funny person. Everyone who met her loved her. She loved exercise and she was just overall a very sweet person. She loved living in Arizona. She had a ton of friends and she had the opportunity to spend time outside almost the entire year. She was originally from Washington where she worked as an esthetician for Admire Medical Aesthetics. But after that, she moved all the way to Arizona to experience someplace new. Her mother said that the two of them would talk literally every single day, whether it was call or text, and when they spoke, she was always happy. She was extremely trusting, almost to a fault, but even when this happened, Lauren's family said that they wouldn't change that personality trait for the world because that's Lauren. Lauren's mother said that she was just surrounded with the best, most beautiful friends who did what they could to support her and support her family, especially after her death. Her friends said that each and every day, they and Lauren had a little ritual where they would ask each other what they're grateful for each morning. On the morning of Lauren's death, she told her friends that she was just grateful for the day. She was grateful to just wake up to another day. She was positive and grateful for the simplest things like going on her morning walk and getting some coffee. On the morning of April 28th, 2023, Lauren started her day by doing what she loved. She went out for a hike on a trail near the 6500 block of East Libby Street, which is located in the northern Phoenix area on Reach 11 Trail, just west of Scottsdale Road and Mayo Boulevard. However, it was quickly discovered that something horrible had happened to Lauren. At some point that next morning, a resident who lived in the area was walking her dog in the same area when she discovered Lauren's body next to a walking trail. This resident said that it was clear that Lauren had suffered some trauma to her body and when she found her, she actually recognized Lauren. Lauren had frequented that trail quite often and she lived in an apartment complex nearby. I also saw reports that Lauren's friends became concerned when Lauren did not show up for work that morning and did not call anybody to say why. So her friends called 911 for a welfare check to check on her. And of course, the police found out that she was not home. So obviously the person who found Lauren's body called 911 and of course that connection was made. Her body was found just before 11 a.m. on the day after the hike on April 29th. The official identification was made by May 1st, which of course showed that the body belonged to Lauren. Of course, Lauren's body was quickly sent off to the medical examiner for an autopsy and the autopsy came back pretty quickly. The medical examiner found that Lauren suffered 15 stab wounds to her upper body and her back, with the deepest laceration being three inches deep. While investigating the scene where her body was found, police found that Lauren's belongings were all scattered along the running path, which led to a barbed wire fence. This barbed wire fence was near where Lauren's body had been found. The autopsy also showed that Lauren had defensive wounds on her arms and hands, as well as small abrasions all over her body, which was likely from her trying to run through the barbed wire fence. Then the clothes that she was wearing were also torn and tattered, which also indicated that she had been trying to get over that barbed wire. So right away, it was clear to investigators that Lauren had been viciously attacked. She tried running away from her attacker, but unfortunately, she was not able to get away. The next thing police did was try to look for any and all surveillance video that they could find to see if they could spot anybody else on the trail next to Lauren. So one surveillance camera showed Lauren walking on the trail at around 10.52 a.m. on the 28th. She was walking at a leisurely pace, just enjoying her time outside and in nature. 
About 22 seconds later though, she goes out of view of the camera and towards the area where she was later found. Then only a few seconds later after that, a man was seen sprinting in the same direction as where Lauren was walking until he runs behind some vegetation and can no longer be seen. Then there's nothing on the video for about a minute, and then a minute later, the same man is seen running once again, but this time in the opposite direction, trying to cross the barbed wire fence until he eventually left view of the camera. So, of course, this gave the police an amazing starting point. They literally had what appeared to be the suspect on surveillance video, but unfortunately, the quality was not very good. It was very blurry. But luckily, police also found a shoe that had fallen off of Lauren during the attack nearby that barbed wire fence, and on that shoe, they were able to find DNA evidence. This DNA evidence led police to a 22-year-old man named Zion William Teasley. Using this connection, police were able to ping his cell phone, and they found out that his cell phone had been in the area where Lauren was killed around the same time that she was murdered. Then the movements on that phone matched up completely with the movements captured on that surveillance video. So now police had those two connections, which is pretty good. But just to make sure, police went to the people who knew Zion and asked if they can confirm who the person is on that surveillance video. And those people who knew Zion said that it did look like it was him on that surveillance video. Those who knew him also said that Zion was known to carry around a three inch pocket knife which matched the size and depth of Lauren's many stab wounds. Now, as you could have probably guessed, Zion Teasley did have a past criminal record, which we will get more into in just a minute, but at the time, he was on probation. So, what we know is that on May 3rd, five days after Lauren's murder, Zion had met up with his probation officer. That probation officer noticed that the headphones that Zion was wearing matched the headphones that the suspect was wearing in that surveillance video. The probation officer couldn't confirm 100% if the man in the video was Zion, but he said that this man had a very similar build and profile to Zion. So, the next day after that, by May 4th, literally just a couple of days ago, by 6.30 p.m., Zion was located at his apartment complex in the Catherine Townhomes in Scottsdale, just a five-minute drive away from the hiking trail, and he was apprehended. The interview that Zion had with police was very interesting. In the interview, he did admit to investigators that he recognized the area where Lauren was killed, but he wouldn't tell them what specific routes he knew about. All he said was that he had been on that walking trail before, but that he never went on the same spot, so he never took the same route. At first, he was shown a still image of the surveillance video that captured him, and he said, that's me. But then he recanted and started saying that he wasn't sure, even after he was shown the actual video surveillance. Zion told investigators that he grew up Christian and struggled with his sexuality. He said that he was worried about the, quote, salvation of his soul due to his thoughts. He told investigators that after killing Lauren, he saw some news reports about her and he immediately recognized her. When they showed him a picture of her in the actual police interrogation, Zion told the police that he wanted to look like Lauren. When he was asked if he knew why he was arrested, he said something like, there's no freaking way I'm here for a sex crime. I haven't been with anyone for a long time. Once again, when he was showed a picture of Lauren in the interrogation room, he said that he couldn't remember if she was the one that he murdered or if he had ever even met her in person. Again, all he said was that he wanted to look like her. When he was asked if he intended on killing Lauren, he apparently said, quote, I am definitely not the person who plans to kill another person, adding, if I was going to do something like that, it wouldn't be premeditated. So to me, that's showing that he is just trying to paint a narrative from the very beginning. I don't know what to think about the whole I want to look like Lauren thing, struggling with his sexuality. It 100% could be true. He could be struggling with that. He could be saying that because he wants to please some sort of defense, saying that like he didn't know what he was doing. 
insanity, etc. When Zion was arrested, he was found to be in possession of a plane ticket to fly to Detroit in a couple of days. When he was asked about the ticket, he claimed that there had been a death in the family, but none of that information could be confirmed. So to me, again, I think he was planning on fleeing to an area where family lived. I do think that Detroit is probably where his family lived. It's a random place to flee to if you don't know anybody there. So I do think that his family lived there, but I do think he bought that ticket with the intention of fleeing. It also turned out that Zion had been ex-military. He had previously enlisted in the U.S. Marine Corps, but he did not complete training. He started training in San Diego in March of 2019, but he was separated in June of 2019 before finishing boot camp, but we don't have any further details about his time in the military due to privacy acts, so we don't know how he was discharged, if he was discharged, if he just quit, etc. That's really all we know about that. So, just the fact that he was in the military is definitely interesting. And like I said earlier, Zion did have a past criminal record. It turned out that Zion had just been released from prison that past November of 2022. And like I said, he was on probation at the time of Lauren's death. He had been in jail for charges of a felony robbery with a deadly weapon, felony disorderly conduct, and another count of armed robbery. These were offenses that occurred over multiple dates back in 2020. Now, Zion had actually pled guilty to these charges, and in return for his plea agreement, 10 other charges were dropped, including burglary, four counts of kidnapping, one count of aggravated assault, and three other robbery charges. He was convicted in July of 2021, and he spent 16 months in Red Rock Correctional Facility in Eloy before he was released in November of 2022. Before that, at some point, he had also spent another year in jail. When Zion took the plea deal, prosecutors assessed Zion as being medium to low risk to reoffend. Also, according to court records, it turned out that Zion had also been recently fired from his job for apparently being aggressive with other female employees, and he was suspected of stealing. When police were speaking with his past employer and they were trying to see if they could identify him in that video, the employer said that he was literally wearing the clothes that he stole from the store when he was fired in that video. Because of all of that, Zion was charged with the first-degree murder of Lauren Heike and he was taken into custody. His first court appearance was on May 4th and during this appearance, he apparently did not say a single word other than confirming his name. In the hearing, prosecutor said that Zion did show signs of premeditation in the killing of Lauren and they said that he is a flight risk due to the fact that he already had this plane ticket purchased and was ready to fly across the country to Michigan. So, because of this, his bail was set at $1 million, and he is currently being held in the Maricopa County Jail on charges of first-degree murder, as well as other probation offenses. So, that is where the case stands right now. I am really happy that the suspect in this case has already been arrested so shortly after it happened, and so is Lauren's family. In a statement, Lauren's mother, Lana, said, quote, As most of you have probably heard, Phoenix PD have arrested the person responsible for Lauren's death. We are breathing a sigh of relief this morning knowing another family will not have to walk in our shoes because of this person. Although this doesn't bring our Loey back and the journey ahead of us is sad and daunting, we are eternally grateful for the love and support we've received from the moment she went missing. Thank you to every one of you. We are overwhelmed with the number of messages, offers to help, and prayers that we have and still continue to receive. I think it's a testament to what a beautiful person Lauren was. We are also grateful to the Phoenix community who opened their hearts to us and answered our calls for help. Lastly, but most importantly, we are grateful to the Phoenix Police Department. Thank you to the detectives who worked this case as hard as if it was their own child. Thank you to the officers at the station who showed us so much compassion while giving us the courage to seek justice and confidence to know that they would find it for us. 
Please continue to keep our family in your prayers. To close, she wrote, quote, In the shelter of your wings, I will take refuge until the storms of destruction pass by. Obviously, this case is just a horrifying one. As of right now, police are labeling this as a random ambush. We don't know yet if there is anything else going on. We don't know if they knew each other or if he knew her or if there was anything else like stalking going on. Right now to them, it literally just seems like a completely random ambush of her being in the wrong place at the wrong time with a complete psycho. We did get a little bit of a peek into his state of mind during that police interview, but again, it's hard to tell if he's trying to stir up a narrative to seem more empathetic or if he's going to try to plea insanity. We don't know exactly what is going on as of right now. We know he had a record. We know that he had other red flag behaviors, but this kind of random attack is just so hard to predict, if not impossible. So it's really, really hard to tell what's going on as of right now because this is such a recent case. Now, I wanted to bring this case to you all so that we can talk more about how to keep yourself safe, especially if you're a woman who enjoys being outdoors and going on hikes, especially by yourself. It sucks that we even have to consider our physical safety when we're doing things that we enjoy, but that's the reality of life. I am always urging my female viewers to do what you can to protect yourself. I'm someone, I love going on hikes by myself, I love going on bike rides, I love bringing my dog, but if you are hiking alone, please first and foremost, always be aware of your surroundings. Never have two earphones in. Always hike with one earphone in and the other ear open so that you can hear if anything is going on around you. Or even better, this is what I do. I just kind of play the music on my phone. I either put it in like an arm strap or in my bra, honestly. And I just sort of have the music playing so that I can hear it, but so that I can also hear what's going on around me so that it isn't blocking my ability to hear my environment and it's not bothering anybody else. That's personally what I do and I think it's worked for me at least this far. I also suggest bringing some sort of weapon anytime you are hiking alone or even if it's just like you and another girl or in a small group, especially if this is an area that is not trafficked well. But even if it is, I've personally heard friends and coworkers tell me about situations where they're confronted with some weirdo while they're hiking on a trail that is very busy and well trafficked. Some people literally do not care who is around them and will attack whether there are others around or not. So please just stay aware. Bring some sort of weapon that you are comfortable with. Whether you have your own little pocket knife, which I do, I have a pretty cool knife that I bring with me on my own hikes. You could also get a taser, which is really good if someone runs up on you and they come in close contact. They have like those little tasers that can go on a keychain. They have big ones. I have personally a bigger one that has a flashlight on it. There's so many different options for those types of weapons. So if someone, you know, again, comes up, tries grabbing you, you can tase them pretty quickly. It's hard to stab someone with enough force to hurt them if they're already trying to attack you, which is why I like a taser because it's literally just a poke with a taser and you can really hurt someone. So I personally prefer a taser over a pocket knife, but whatever you feel more comfortable with. Another great option is pepper spray, which honestly can deter someone for a good few seconds, which can be enough to save your life. Even if it just startles them and they try chasing you again, that can still be enough to get a head start on them to get them away from you. Or if you're comfortable with carrying, carry. If you're trained with your firearm and you're comfortable shooting it without earplugs in that environment, then bring it. There's no such thing as being too safe when you're hiking alone or in a small group. So again, whatever you're comfortable with, I do suggest bringing some sort of personal protection weapon so that you can have the leg up if someone does try to attack you. And lastly, I highly suggest sharing your location with your family and trusted friends. I honestly have my location on all of the time with a couple of my friends who I trust, but if, especially if you are someone who loves hiking alone or if you just decide one day, hey, I want to go on this random hike, it's only a one-time thing, but you're still going, just let a friend who lives nearby know and share your location so that if something is off, they may notice a lot sooner. Just text a friend, say, hey, I'm going on a hike, you have my location for the morning. 
if I don't get back by this time, just please give me a call. Or if I don't answer, you know, that means that I'm probably in danger. Just let them know. It's really not that big of a deal. Some friends might think that you're being too paranoid, but I would rather be too paranoid and my friends be like, she's paranoid. What's wrong with her? Then get her and have nobody know what happened to me. So that just sort of puts things into perspective for me. All of these things are steps that yes, we should not have to take. So many people will say, well, we shouldn't have to do this, so I'm not gonna. And those are the people that end up getting hurt. And again, it's unfortunate. We should be able to go out and hike and just have a good time, not being afraid. Women should be able to do whatever they want without fear of being harmed. But unfortunately, the world we live in, no matter where you live in the world, there are shitty people out there. There are crappy people out there. There are people who want to do you harm. It's not everybody. In fact, it's rare. Those people are rare, but they exist. So again we just need to take the steps to protect ourselves in case of that situation. Even if it doesn't seem likely that it'll happen to you. Think of how many times Lauren went on a hike without being harmed. Especially if she goes every single day, you can go 364 times without being harmed, but on that 365th, when you're not prepared, something happens. So again, please just every single time you go out there, every single time you go hike, biking, whatever by yourself or in a small group, especially if you are a female, Please take the time to just protect yourself. Take the time to be aware of your surroundings and just know what's going on around you. Be prepared for these situations. It's better to be safe than sorry, and it's better to be prepared if this type of situation were to happen to you. Have fun. Go hike. Enjoy the outdoors. Be independent. Exercise. Do everything that you love but please be safe while doing so. So that is where I will get off my soapbox for the day. I know I rant about these things a lot, but genuinely I care about each and every one of you and your safety. I just, I want each and every one of you to be safe. I know hiking is so much fun, being by yourself, being outdoors, it's so much fun. Just make sure you're doing it safely. And that's all I'll say about that because I know I, I get on my soapbox about that, but that is all I have for today's video. My heart, of course, goes out to Lauren, her family, and everybody else who loved her. But that is all I have for today's case. Because of how recent this case is, I will keep you all updated as any new information comes out. But for now, that is all I have for you guys today. If you liked this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to go ahead and turn that notification bell to on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow my Twitter and Instagram. Both will be linked down below. Twitter is where I keep the most up to date with any recent case that I cover like this one. If you have absolutely any case suggestions for a case that you'd like to see covered on this channel, make sure you go ahead and fill out the Google form that I have listed down below. With that, I hope you guys have an amazing week, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.